Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, the one in best of one. Self-proclaimed but defended title. And being that means sometimes we've got to do the most ridiculous, powerful, and play the most dangerous, deadly, and spiky formats in Magic history, like Historic Brawl, a place where literally winning at all costs is the only point. And today I'm going to show you one of my favorite decks from Historic Brawl, Hinata dawn crowned and this deck hasn't changed a ton since Hinata was first introduced but it did gain a new card a new alchemy card from commander legends battle for boulders gate i'm gonna get that on the screen for you and you can read that one while i do my thank yous thank you very much to how to do typo how to typo for the subscribe Description on Patreon, you joined at a tier that gets you a video shout out. So this Hinata Brawl video is dedicated to you, how to typo, and to your ability to show exactly how to typo. If you would like a shout out and for me to tell you that you're very cool, then hit the link in the description. How to typo, you're very cool. So this deck, this Hinata deck is a Jeskai control deck. I don't think that surprises anybody. And I'm not going to go card by card over all the different Jeskai control elements in the pile. I think all of that should make perfect sense to anybody who watches and plays Magic a good amount. The card we have to discuss is this one. A card that was printed that while I do not love using the same art as a paper card, and I do not love alchemy, uh, in general, and the digital-only mechanics, what they've done with them, there are moments. There are moments where I see what what it was meant to be. There are moments when they do it right, and I'm like, if a lot of the cards were like this, or if there were just less cards, you know? If you just made less alchemy cards, but made them like this, oh my gosh. They, they create these fun, amazing experiences, and they should have their own art, but they create these fun, amazing experiences that must be played to be believed. Um, they create awesome, just social media type moments, and I'm here for it. So Snowborn Simulacrum, this is an X and a blue, blue sorcery at Mythic, and it says conjure a duplicate of each of X target non-token permanents into your hand. Those cards gain you may Spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast this spell. If X is five or more, you may put one of them from your hand onto the battlefield. When you combine Snowborn Simulacrum with Hinata Dawncrowned, you conjure a duplicate of every permanent on the battlefield, including lands. Um, I've cast this for 30 or more, just like putting... <laughs> A lot of them are usually lands, putting like 20 some lands into my hand, mana rocks, enchantments that normally don't even fit into my color pie, always a duplicate copy of my commander. I've even had feather in this deck before, and the combination with feather is you can do it every turn. Nobody ever actually let that happen, so I took feather out of the deck. It was probably the most clunky, inconvenient card in the deck, and instead I brewed Jeskai Control around Hinata Dawn Crown without too many cards that even abuse the Hinata ability just with the plan that we're going to get to an end game state where we play Hinata and we cast the Snowborn Simulacrum, duplicating everything on the battlefield into hand. And hopefully when that happens, I'll have my Reliquary Tower or my Nezahal Primal Tide or my Seagate Restoration to give me zero max hand size for the for that turn. Because having to discard all that is kind of a buzzkill. And it actually doesn't make sense to craft absolutely every single card unless you have some way to take advantage of a lot of land in your graveyard. I don't know. But this card is absolutely wild. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it with Hinata for two mana cloning everything on the battlefield. It just does crazy. And I think it's worth a video. And I think it's worth a mythic wild card if you have a Hinata deck or you want to try Hinata Brawl. I really like this. This is the kind of thing that it's cool. It's exciting. You're going to it's going to blow your mind when you see it happen on the battlefield. I promise you. And other than that, we're playing Jeskai Control to set it up is right in my wheelhouse. Let's dive in to the historic brawl absolute nonsense queue and let the Snowborn Simulacra begin. 
Yo guys, uh, quick self plug. You're used to an ad spot right here. I'm going to plug something of my own. It would mean a lot to me if you guys would consider supporting it. The Worst Possible Commander Show, a commander show that I've been creating with my friends at my local game store, is moving to its own channel. So look up the channel Covert Go Crew. It's like Covert Go Blue, but with crew on the end. C-R-E-U. Covert Go Crew. The first episode is live. It would mean a lot to me if you would watch it, share it with your friends, leave a comment, do the things that help the algorithm, and please subscribe to the new channel as it takes a lot in these early days to get momentum in the algorithm and to get monetized. And I'd love to keep doing this show with my friends and help uh, build up my local game store and the local gaming community to be fine entertainers for you as well. Use some of the things I learned and pass them on. That's the plan. And also, of course, make the best worst possible commander show that I can. So check out the link in the description, look for Covert Go Crew, or just search for it on YouTube, Covert Go Crew, and check out the worst possible commander show. And uh, remember to subscribe to that channel. Thank you. And now into the video. Zerith in the command zone. So it can't use its ninjutsu from the command zone. So this is a control deck. Having the Celestis seems really good against a control deck. We don't have white mana until the Celestis resolves, though. I still think it's a keep. And I think we're Jwari tap den. Go from there. So I'm expecting a lot of counter spells and maybe a little bit of rogue action. This is return an unblocked rogue. Yeah, so. A little bit of tribal stuff. Let's opt up. Passage. I mean, I guess that gets us white mana, so I'll keep it. I really can't be sure that this will resolve, and maybe I should play around Sensor and Jwari anyway. Let the staring match begin. All snow covered basics so far. Okay, that's a white source. I guess we hold this for a potential brainstorm at some point. I would like to cast the Celestis and I would really like it to resolve. What do you say? Mystical disputed, gotcha. Let's resolve the curse on your Xerath. Not going to come out for a while. And we got their Mystical Dispute, which is not a counter spell that they want to be caught holding. Or, I mean, how should I put this? They really would rather save that to win a counter war, but they don't want to have it in the wrong spot. Do we go for it? Do we go for it? I think we go for it. I think we go for it. We gotta start getting these counter spells out of their hands somehow, if that's what they have. And that mystical dispute tells me they might not. Okay. The wash away lit up because we could counter our own commander if we so wished. The aisle comes down. Just an uh, endless staring match right now. Another white source. Tempting to send in the den, but they probably have removal. And I can't save it. All right. Um, eat another counter or removal spell? Or just wait? I guess just wait. God, what I give though for like um, a treasure map or a maze mine tome or a reckoner bank bust or something to gain a little advantage while we wait. That's not good. Well, keeps me from activating the den. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. That card can determine these kind of games. Especially since blue black, they don't know what to do about an artifact. Raven lore. One mana open. Countered. Gotta fight the coward advantage fights. 
Yes, a locked Wayne. It's a painful way to keep up on cards, but it's an option. To the bottom. Hold. Do we send? You know what they want to do is start forcing the Xeraths on. I don't have a lot else to do. So yeah, let's eat another counterspell. Resolves. Might eat a removal spell instead. We'll see. So, we could try to into the Royal Arhanata, but that risks a major blowout potentially. I am going to crack this to go get a blue source so that they can't, in response to me cracking it on their turn, cast their commander while I have no mana available. I also just want to scare them. They might have done something like uh, kill it again in response when they didn't have to. But I don't want to save this with Into the Royal. I think it's a losing, a losing gamble. I'd rather get this treasure map flipped. I'm okay with paying more for Hanada as the game gets later. And they're going to go... For Castle Lock the Wayne, take four. I mean, we do have some extra life to play with in Brawl, don't we? All right, they found their Tome. That's a really good card for them. Arguably better than the map. All right, we drew some card draw. All right, this game is really starting to take off. Let's foretell a card and pass to our opponent, who is going to get that tome cooking. See if they also draw with their castle. Probably not, but you never know. Maybe they really don't respect my backup burn plan. If my opponent played red, I'd activate the map in response there. But they don't. All right. Thought Erasure. We could counter it, but that's just using our mana. Yeah, they're going to take the wash away anyway. So, well, we want to have the mana to try to behold into another counter spell. They keep on top. All right. Let's see if we can resolve Behold the Multiverse. Discover the formula. You'll love to see that. We'll probably resolve it, too, because the opponent's been tapping out on their end step a lot. And shard, of course. All right, now the card draw is taking off. This is getting to be a proper brawl battle. So, they have a card on top that they like. They have two mana. They can Field of Ruin and draw, but that leaves their, shade, their shields pretty low. I'm trying to decide if I want to power up Den and try to get them to shuffle this card away, and I'm probably overthinking it since they can just draw it anyway. So I think I just pass here. I'm going to look for a window to cast Discover the Formula. They might tap out. Would you like to pay a six life for your castle? You would. All right, and they're going to go for Tome. You know they are. Beautiful. Okay, so we want two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and discover the formula. Mmm, feels so good. <laughs> Look at the value. Look at it. It's so much. Memory lapse. I usually do a good job switching all of my Japanese arts, but I'm going to try to instead just start pulling them up for you guys. A lot of you already know what they do if you play the format, but it can be a little like, whoa, when you can't identify a card by its art. You guys know how important that is to me. It's like complain about the lack of diverse art for alchemy. He said the A word. He said it. He just triggered hundreds of people, maybe thousands. All right, what card here is bad? Kind of none of them, really. I'm trying to think of what I would discard to a chart of the course. A chart of the course? <laughs> All right, let's send out the Bank Buster. I 
really, I, I guess I should just hold this until I have like too many lands or something. Zareth might be about to play. There's, I guess, but foretelling this makes it potentially one mana, but I'm not about to discard to hand size. So I guess we'll just pass here. There might be a battle. There could be a battle here on this end step. Close my air skirts. Close my air skirts. What the hell does that mean, Alexa? Daniel, here is a reminder. Close my air skirts. I don't even... Why did I even have her... Give, Alexa, thank you. Stop reminding me. There are no reminders scheduled. <laughs> Stop it, Alexa. You're drunk. <laughs> What the hell does that mean, my air skirts? What good is a reminder if it makes no sense? Okay, so we had to draw an extra card there because they went after the treasure map thingy. And because of that, I'm going to foretell this so I don't have to discard. Two hand size. Because every card can matter. They also know we're probably not fighting a counter war here. They don't have enough now for Xerath with any kind of protection. Could Heliod's intervention the tome there? I feel like it's already done a lot. This is going to be all about pacing threats. So some of you who are Zoomer bored by this, I'm not sorry. <laughs> this is exactly the type of games that I find interesting and many like me. If you enjoy these kind of games, leave me a comment. But I think this is what Historic Brawl should be, as opposed to concede on turn two, three, four. All right, they discarded a removal spell. See, discarding the hand size is a weapon in control mirrors. And some of you are rolling your eyes, but it's true. All right, keep getting ahead on mana. Keep passing the turn. No rush at all. No rush at all. At some point, there's going to be a fight. They're running out of card advantage and their life total's low. Plus, maybe at some point I can just cast Explosion and wreck them. All right, so Curse of Silence trigger. I don't think I want to get rid of it, but let's at least know what's going on first. I'm going to try to memory lapse your commander. I think they'll counter this counter, but I could be wrong. Putting it on top of the library is slightly risky if I have a way to make them shuffle. But I don't. Don't tell them. If I had a field of ruin on the battlefield, it would be a, a smooth operator kind of play. A ghost quarter is another good one that I don't usually run in my three color decks. All right, so memory lapse resolves. Let's not sacrifice the curse. Zareth is on top. And they don't seem to have a way to get rid of it, so just continuing to tax them seems good. So let's see if they can hit their land drop. They had to discard to hand size last time. Let's keep using hand size as a weapon. Uh-huh. They move to end step. I'll draw. Ooh, sublime epiphany. How exciting. Your turn, discard some cards. Well, they discard their commander <laughs> and tax it just to hang on to other cards and send it back to the command zone. Time will tell. Baleful Mastery, you find a villain's lair. Oh my gosh, good removal spells and counter spells. That's the kind of discards you want to see. Unfortunately, now we're in that spot, but I I think what I'm going to try to do is use March of Swirling Mist to protect my Den of the Bugbear and have a fight over it. I could also go for Hinata, but man, that's expensive. I do need to empty some cards. See if they try to kill it here. Try 
try to save it. It might fire off some more removal. Oh, this has a perpetual one mana reduction. I guess we still wanted to float this, though, if we're about to lose it anyway. Murderous Rider is a good one for them to use. I like that. Um, I could Swords or Absence my own den here so that they don't get a 2-3. Every little bit, every every bit matters. I could go for a Sublime Epiphany, which would probably not resolve. Although I have some ways to force it, but I would want two counter spells. All right, I'll go for the Fateful Absence. Try to make the opponent lose their Murderous Rider here. With the Swords, I'm not as afraid of them. All right, so Rider goes. March doesn't resolve quite. Scorn goes. And we'll go like this and crack Clue. Don't know why it wasn't letting me use the Mind Stone there. I tried to. Nezahal. Oh, that's so good. All right. Um, let's end the turn. We succeeded in preserving our hand size. So in the last turn, we got a free Mind Rot. They had to discard. And then... We played out our cards, and they had to use their cards to answer them. So we did not have to discard. We got something for our cards. It's one of the tricks in Control Mirrors that takes, like, a lot of people find it very counterintuitive, is about when and how they discard a hand size, and when they just kind of throw things to the opponent so that they get something for their cards. By the way, what's Nezahal say? Can't be countered? No max hand size. Whenever they cast a non-creature, draw. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. All right, let's draw with the Bank Buster. It'll also finish the Bank Buster. So we get a pilot. All those cards in hand. Let's see if the opponent wants to kill this before they see the Nezahal. Could also try to into the royal it if we really want to pile up, you know, really want to pile up value. But I think that this card has done its job, and that's a four mana eat to extinction. So, pretty happy with that. It's a lot of resources. Here's Nezzy. Rawr! Resolves. Do we keep hitting our land drop? I think so. Go blue. Oh, it's a tough card to kill. It is a tough card to kill. Opponent's going to go for a drown in the lock. Let's see this graveyard. Plenty. All right. Resolve the draw trigger. Now decide what to do. Could counter the drown in the lock. Could also discard... I got four mana open. Could also discard a handful of cards. Yeah, let's just uh, send some cards to discard fodder status. Don't think this is going to matter anytime soon right now. But the Heliod's intervention really hasn't mattered. And I wish I'd just cast it a long time ago on the Tome now that I see the opponent doesn't have any other things. But I guess it's helping here. So let's see if they play another removal spell now in Nezahal. With that trigger on the stack, they can try to kill it. And then I'll have to make decisions like whether or not to try to into the royal it back to my hand, to counter the removal spell, etc. All right. I mean, either they are thinking this through to the absolute last possible moment using every available brain cell, or they disconnected, or it's a, a salty scoop. Because this rope is going has gone all the way from three timeouts to zero. Opponent, you got a way out? Probably not. All right, Nezahal gone. Drown in the lock to the graveyard. Throw it over to you. Are you still here? It would be funny if it was a disconnect and they came back and they're like, Oh, the Nezahal's gone. Nice. It resolved! 
Awesome. And then they take their turn, right? And it comes back on end step and then they scoop. <laughs> So one of the best ways, if you're ever in this position, to kill the Nezahal, let's just imagine the script was flipped and my opponent had the Nezahal. The best way to get rid of Nezahal is to use a removal spell, get them to use the discard three ability to exile it, and then if you have a disallow, sublime epiphany, stifle, tail's end, you counter the trigger that returns it and it just stays exiled forever. That is the primo way to handle it. Looks like our opponent handled it by just exiting the game. Probably uninstalled, to be honest. Which is too bad. That was a good uh, chess match. I enjoyed it a lot uh, up until the anticlimactic ending. Mercury Moon. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. I do know this hand doesn't have white mana and is no rampies and is on the draw, so it's a mulligan. And this one has rampies and all the mana, so it's a keep. I also don't need white mana right away. So maybe I opt first. Let's try to improve my curve or have the right answers. Omnixilis is dangerous. It would be really... Oh, that's such a good draw. It would be really nice to have a removal spell ready to go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just ramping here is but that bad. It's so bad, we just get double obbed. I guess I have a few cards I can try to draw into, but it's going to be a really sad game. Wow. They play Theater of Horrors instead of double obbing me. <laughs> Lucky for them. That was one of the cards I was thinking that I needed to draw into. All right, tap land here really sucks. It really sucks. Things are not going great. Woe Strider. So they're going to try to hit me and cast this Woe Strider? Again, that's better than getting obbed. Maybe I want to hit this with blink of an eye. Could also counter the Woe Strider, which is a good use of the Geist Light Snare. But I kind of effectively counter it with a bounce spell here, right? I just really wish I could get the card from this blink of an eye. I'm just mad that I don't. But if we don't take damage, they can't cast this spell. So they'll probably just recast this, which is kind of a time walk. Oh, that was a really good time walk. All right, now we have one of each type, no duels. Pretty good. And no land. Oh, that makes me angry. All right, I'm going to put this into my hand because it's the reason I made the video and I haven't drawn it in a game yet. But missing this land drop, probably GG. What do they got down there now? Arena and Woe Strider. It's really good. They'll probably cast the Arena. They seem greedy. Yeah, they're going to try to grind me out. Don't know if that's the way. All right. Land? If there's no land, I was going to scoop out. There is a land, but we're going to be stuck on five for a really long time. So these uncastable cards can hang out on top of the library. At least it's double blue. Hmm. Can I play you? The opponent will kill you, right? Just wait till next turn and we can protect it. So what do we do this turn? Just say go. I guess we can bolt this. But we can wait. Let the opponent take their actions. They hit a Rahilda. I hate their deck. But it's probably pretty good. Alright, bolt. All right, put something on the stack for me. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, play you. Protected by March. And then hopefully untap Simulacrum. 
And all of your coolie, cool enchantments will be mine. Mine? Unless they have removal spell and removal spell. That wouldn't be the worst thing that could happen. Uh, submit zero. Phase. Please do not respond with another removal spell. Please. Thank you. That is a thing you can do. <laughs> it's time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're going to discard most of these. But by God, we're doing this. Come to daddy. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on, man. Come on. I had maximum hand size. I was just going to discard most of them. Oh, come on. Giada. You really want a mulligan for a Giada removal e card. Or a sweeper. This has ramp. And card draw. It's kind of letting the opponent do their thing, though. I'm very scared. I'm going to do it, though. We, we've got the Reliquary Tower, so if we do assemble our combo, we actually get to keep the cards, which is a, it's a bigger deal to me than it should be. I'll put it that way. I'm going to put that on the bottom. Doesn't remove the Giada. Doesn't sweep the board. It's our only white source. Hope it makes it. I guess Fable can help now. So what you got there? Your commander lived. Redeem. <laughs> Doesn't affect me as much as you think it should, and it's not an angel, so I'm calling the flavor police. Wait, what? They make one of those? One man of flying vigilance one one? That's now a two two? I feel bamboozled. Do we go for Hinata? I don't have protection for Hinata in hand anyway. I feel like I should just get it on the battlefield. White. So I need to play a red or a blue if I'm going to do that. Now I have another red here. So I'll play this on blue. It also makes my top decks amazing. Although Redain makes them a little less exciting. How much does a Mizzix... <laughs> wait, wait. How much does a freaking... <laughs> Magma Opus cost now <laughs> with Redain. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I don't know. I don't want to know. The answer. They had to exile a card to do it, too. An Elspeth Conqueror's Death. Wow. Okay. I really hate Hinata, but respect. You have another one mana angel. I think there's a changeling out there. Blink of an eye. The blink of an eye, his whole life changed. All right, let's get another white. Play you. And am I blinking something? I think I should hold it up and blink something. I'm just not sure what. Probably the Redain. Physics Mastery with Fable could be interesting. But yeah, I should worry about the board. I'm at 17. Okay. It's not very scary. But I guess you got to fill out your angel deck, your mono white angel deck somehow. That's the problem with Giada. Mono white angels. They just don't have the uh, options that the other decks do. It looks like they're going to miss a land drop here. Everybody's coming at me. Let's bounce the Redain. Seek new knowledge. So many ways to draw cards. 
none of them really affecting the board. I think I'm I'm gonna draw two cards from this. This is a draw two, put one back. This is kind of a draw two. I think I'm just sending this. This is so expensive though. And with Redain coming, I have to assume I can kill the Redain. So let's send this away. Can't kill it yet. Opponent's not gonna let me keep this. They'll probably trade one of their angels for it, which alleviates pressure. Nope, they let me keep it. Nice. All right, chart of course, two cards. Wrath of God in the house. Don't think I play it now though. Let's go unexpected conversion and try to turn this slow treasure map into something else. Oh, we can't, not an instant or sorcery. This is white. I guess I'll transform this consider for free and keep the sweepers. Insight, it's fine. Do I play this? No, save the mana. Gonna need it for Redain. Curse my Hinata, probably. Be a name, Supreme Verdict. I might. <laughs> Nah, you name Hinata. That's okay. My deck can function without its commander for a long time. It's very much like the finishing move. It's one of the good things about control decks. In 1v1 historic brawl, they're usually more resilient than decks that rely on their commanders to fill their curve and make all their other aggro cards better. They're going with the shield. Really? Really? Okay. Doesn't help against Wraths. They're slow rolling me with a response to this. All, all you've got is a scry. Come on now. Silly thing to rope me for. Disconnects our abundant these days, so I try not to judge too harshly, though. All right, let's go get that treasure. Goblin Shaman, you're going in there. You're not coming back. You can't trade with these because of the shield. But you're going in there nonetheless. You will meet them in battle nonetheless. Opponent takes the one. <laughs> of course you do. All right. They're done roping me on this Maze Mind Tome activation. They're just going to scry to the bottom so I can take my turn. That's nice of them. Boom shakalaka. Nine life is a bit too low for me. And we'll also get down this Guardian Idol so we're ramped up for the future. Hang on to the treasures. We see Giada's return. And now they can start drawing with their tome. Or they can play this here changeling as a 4 2. Do I have to Supreme Verdict again? And they scry. Dude, no patience. You're going to need those cards. Don't scry right now. Draw. Draw. It's the sauce. It's so good. You'll love it. I promise. Supreme Verdict. Keep the pressure low. Play the treasure map. Get that going. And now we're getting set up for an excellent Mizzix Master with so much value in it. There you go. Yeah, the card, drawing cards is so nice, you know? My wife's been playing Commander, and she's been playing a little bit of Arena and some Historic Brawl, and she's done her color challenges. I have to keep reminding her, like, you want to draw those cards? She'll like activate Minsk and Boo for seven. And sometimes I'm like, don't forget to draw the cards. They're so good. She's just having such a good time dealing damage and killing people. She's a freaking red and green mage through and through. But she's my red and green mage. Uh, yeah, we'll take a brainstorm. 
All right, Bishop of Wings. Hmm. Gonna cast the Chemister's Insight, try to hit land drop here. Just keep the cards coming for a little while. Brainstorm treasure map, not a bad combination. If you have something that you want to get rid of, that's not very good. We do need to save a treasure because we don't have triple red for mastery. Ooh. I mean, that's a powerful card. Let's see what we find with the brainstorm. We might locate a Heliod's intervention and then we wouldn't want to counter this. <laughs> okay, then. I guess we can opt scry one of those. So uh, let's go with scry. I think I'm okay with this. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Besides, counter that, they're gonna leave. <laughs> we fall to eight. You gotta, you gotta preserve that hope if you want to play out any games with your blue deck. Burn down the house. Okay. Discover the formula. Ooh, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Yes, we're going to do that. Land for turn. Just going to say go. The opponent's really looking forward to drawing that card with the Giada. Maybe also drawing here with Cryptic Caves. Like, you got to let them enjoy it. We're going to enjoy their card draw. We get to enjoy ours. It's all fun and games until somebody flashes back a Mizzix Mastery and plays a Wash Away. Eight mana Giada. I have Vecna. Hey, I they do know how to draw cards. Give it up for that. Okay. So, treasure map. Oh, oh no. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, no more Mr. Nice CGB. This one's this one's about to get ugly. Really ugly. Uh, I guess I'll take this time warp. And I can play you? Yeah. That's the play. So, Curse, would you like to draw now? They haven't left yet. They haven't left yet. And what do we got here? Wrath, Snare. I'll, I'll just take the counter spell. That might be enough for them. Not yet. Okay. Mastery. So... <laughs> Okay. Yep. Yep. Doing it. I mean, I could put these in an order that makes some of them better. But I'm not. I'm just not. <laughs> oh, baby. Let's go. And I gotta put one on the bottom. I guess this... Uh, burn down can go. I don't know. How, how does one make a choice like that? <laughs> oh, keep it coming. The sound, the sound bug can't handle it. That's for sure. The sound bug can't, can't deal with this. The arena wasn't made for this level of nonsense. <laughs> put two cards back. Sure. I'll put these back. How about that? Does it matter? Do we care? <laughs> and now discover the formula reduce them all baby and i'll have extra turn please nice <laughs> oh my god i can't believe this i cannot believe this can i cast this now yes no max hand size let's go 
Oh, I can't. I can! Okay, I had to sack the treasure. Ah! <laughs> oh no, did I find the Elminster Simulacrum? I found solve the equation. The opponent... Okay, I am going to assume, since they have not left, that they are into this. That they are having as much fun as me right now. And if that's true, I am going to do right by them, by giving them, and you, the viewer at home, the absolute max amount of fun I actually can. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. No! <laughs> okay. Okay, maybe they weren't having the max fun, but I went for it. I tried to provide the max possible fun. I was going to conjure 26 more cards into that hand. Serious question. Why isn't Hinata a hell Q deck. Shouldn't Hinata be a hell Q deck? Because I am massacring the fair decks. All right, we got Jeskai Mirror. Jeskai versus Jeskai. And I... Can I keep this? I mean, on one hand, I have two counter spells. On the other hand, I have two board wipes, which are going to be bad. I only have two land. I, I've got to mull this. I want these two cards, and I want the rest of these gone. Although, I, I'd, I'd like a Reliquary Tower. It's not always in the opener. This is not good. Um, it's basically a six-card hand because of Wrath. There's no interaction here, so I guess I'm really hoping that I can slam Wandering Mind and get away with something. But at least I have my colors. Having colors isn't nothing. Hmm... This enters the battlefield tapped because I don't have a way to make it enter untapped. I'm trying to decide if I do that now because I really want to play this on two. I might get punished if there's something specific to bounce, but I do need to curve out. Sequencing's hard. Oh, that's... Oh, no. No. Not like this. That card is really good. Twenty-four. Okay, they play creatures. Maybe our wrath isn't dead. And we're just way behind. Not dead. Alright, I'll play the wandering mind. And dig up something good. We got a march. We got Heliod's Intervention. None of these can really affect a Planeswalker very well. And I do need to affect a Planeswalker. Heliod's Intervention is interesting. They just won't play out their other artifacts or enchantments. Um, I'm going to grab the March. The cheapest way I see to deal with an Esper Sentinel. Ooh, they slammed the... Okay, well now I'm mad. Should've got the Heliod's Intervention, I guess. <laughs> oh, but what's good is a Narset. Make them cast that again? They would get to draw a card off Esper Sentinel if we blink it. All right, I'm gonna pay three life and I'm gonna Narset. And resolve, auto pay. And I'm not taken down. Narset versus Narset here. It's good against the Whirlwind of Thought. It's good against the Commander if they're going to take it down. So here we go. Opens a window for the Wrath of God. I prefer a peaceful resolution, but so they're down a card draw there. They might be down another card draw here. Oh, they plus. Okay. Let me help you practice. Just the 1-1? One, one? My Wandering Mind could attack their Narset. That's a big deal. I don't have an easy way to deal with it. All right. Um, there's a lot of things that could go wrong, though. The minus six is terrifying, but I don't... I think I can avoid that. No, I think this Narset takes it here. Okay. Attack your Narset. 
keep it off that ultimate train. Land for turn. Wrath of God. Pay for Esper Sentinel. So they can discard to kill this, but if we don't tick it down, they have to discard a four mana card to do it. So I think I like just keeping its loyalty high. Make them discard something big and miss draw step here, or a draw off their Narset, if they even have the card for it. Exhale. By building definition, they usually have less expensive cards in their deck. And I'm just trying to buy time till I can remove this Whirlwind of Thought with the March. The smash. Oh. All right. Time's up. Time's up. If I exile it to Fairy, I can play Hanada here. I don't think that's it, though. Gosh, it's so awkward. I'm one mana off of so many things I'd like to do here. I could into the Royal bounce it. They play it again, then we march it. But if they play one other card, they get really good value. Maybe that's the way though. I mean, they have plenty of mana. That doesn't seem like a great idea. But I do get my, down my Guardian Idol and I have better mana. Ah. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Tough choices, man, tough choices. But that, that's gotta go. Like, we'll just lose to this card. And if I play the Teferi there and I tuck, they can just minus their Narset to kill the Teferi. Okay. They are relentless. Now do I Teferi tuck? Do I bounce? Make them play it again? The problem is this Teferi is just getting closer and closer. I think I've got to go for the Hinata line. Like, I've got to have this on the field, right? The only thing that can be exiled right now is a smashing. So I can wait and see what they do. Could be relevant. Like, maybe I sack, go get blue, and cast a saw it coming. Smashing just doesn't do anything when it's exiled under Bombardment. They need a better card in the graveyard for this to be relevant. So we don't have to freak out yet. All right, here comes a trigger. They, but we got them to tick the Narset down. Let's see what they discard. Is it a big spell? It's not. What is it? But it is five points to my Hinata. Weird. Um, in that case... Oh, they might have mana, right? Yeah, I guess we just let this die. What do we get? Another red? They might, yeah, if they play an untapped land, they can replay the bombardment. So we don't want to bounce it yet. Oh my lord. They're just full of cards that are bad for us. Really need like a burn down the house or something. I could do with a quick sparring match before class. All right, they didn't hit land. Let's go, buddy. It's your time. We need to move quickly. Lofty denial. I don't think that's going to be good enough. I really want to hold up the saw it coming, so... Although I guess this might catch the arcane bombardment. If they're going to slam it, right? Nah, just pass. Just pass. Be safe. I guess I can foretell, right? No. Play around a sensor. All 
Alright, discard to kill Teferi, maybe? Yeah, they discard the Bombardment. Wow. Didn't think they'd do that, but... Makes sense. The bright side is they're down on mana. We just have to find a way to sweep these Planeswalkers. Young Pyromancer. Am I just going to lose to that? We need to find a sweeper anyway, so I guess we let that go. Seek knowledge. Love to. No responses from the opponent on these plays. That's interesting. All right, let's get developed. They played around. They played pretty conservatively. We've got some time. And they do have big mana here, but they're still going to probably play careful. And they don't have instants. Strike it rich, make a treasure, make a 1-1. One, one. Plus mana, life. Many paths lie before me. Metallurgic summons. And they have mana up for interaction. That makes a whole bunch of little constructs. We still have to find a sweeper. This doesn't really change that. So I think this just is fine. I think there's a good chance I my counter gets countered anyway, so we just keep digging. We use our mana to dig for this sweeper. It really needs to be like burn down the house. Uh, this is our last turn for Storm's Wrath to hit Will. Make disappear time wipe. Okay. Lofty, you can go. Well, time wipe's not great, is it? Still need to deal with the planeswalkers. And now the metallurgic summons. So maybe we even wait longer. Power up cave. I hate that. Let's just keep digging. Keep, keep digging. Why did I tap double blue for that? It's freaking, freaking auto tapper. Clarion Spirit, they like their tokens. It's actually a Narset Tokens build, which is not what you expect when you see this commander at all. You must first open the heart. Look at him go! <laughs> Behold the tokens! In all of their tokeny glory. Take it. Don't expose anything to just a zap type removal. Absence takes care of a planeswalker, so I guess I'll keep it. They'll also probably think it was this board wipe based on the fact that people are usually afraid of them. Okay, keep those two. Blue. So this is white. This is white. One, two colorless. Boom shakalaka. Okay, still no counter spells from the opponent. In theory, I can go attack this will. They don't seem to have any response. That sure is leaving shields down, but I could always flip the map. Okay, got something. None of my strategies work. Can always flip the map for treasure to cast a counter spell. <laughs> Heat check. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven. Okay, they can't take it back now. Yeah. Uh huh. 12? No, 11. 11, what you doing? It's gonna be the best make disappear ever. One mana left in the mana pool. How much are they doing to my face? 
Too much. Wait, is it too much? It's nine. Should I like... Oh, I should let that go. <laughs> that, that, they get a 10-10. Can't stop the 10-10. All right, cool. <laughs> no, we don't counter those. We counter the flashback one. We get... We make them take two turns here to deal with us. All right, mana check. One. There's a blue. No, one white. One white is going to cast this... Um, cast this Fateful Absence. All right, you're here. You're gone. I misjudged our communication. Wait, what's... CGB, what is your plan exactly for the 10-10? Oh. The 10-10 that attacks for lethal? Of course. Of course that's the plan. <laughs> um, bounce, copy, counter, draw. I need three targets. Easy. No problem. Should I just do it now? They're going to force action on me anyway. If they draw a counterspell off the top, they can't devils play me out, so it's fine. Because we'll counter the counter. And if they do make the mistake of adding something to the, to the stack before attacking, the Sublime Epiphany is even cheaper. I think my initial plan was to block with the idol, and I just forgot. Not going to lie. All right, target non-land permanent. That's you. Target creature I control. That's me. I'm the player drawing the card. One mana still open. It resolves. Um. I guess I make them deal with. It doesn't matter, right? So I'll keep this one. Now they go for their Devil's Play victory. Ah, they're a mana short, aren't they? They're a mana short. Oh, plus they have to target. So Hinata kind of wrecks that. And that's without knowing about my counter spells. The edge of the knife, baby. All right, so they're going to Narset. Not this time. Still have Make Disappear for the Devil's Play. Vega the Watcher. What the hell? Whenever you cast a spell from other than your hand, draw a card. Now has Ward 2, thanks to the magic of alchemy. Kind of a pain, actually. <laughs> no island! What's the matter with me? Actually, I can make a treasure with this, can't I? Two damage. Yeah, make treasure. So we'll go white, blue, red, and then ward two. Oh, yeah. So reduced for targets. So we got to go two damage to any target. Target player makes a treasure. Two damage. Yes. I'm the player. This happens. Resolve. Hey. My ward two. Now I have a treasure I can sack to this. I guess I'm actually going to keep back my Hinata. Because who knows what has haste in this cold, cold world. Here's their land. Kaikar. 
scary. All right, let's draw a card. Let's see if we can find something to deal with the Kai car. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, 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 okay. How exciting. Um, resolves. Experimental overload. Wait, what's this do again? Create an XX where X is the number of instant sorceries in your graveyard. Then you may return instant sorcery from graveyard to hand. What you getting? What a bizarre game we've had. Um, so I can make them pay two more. Don't think that's good enough. But they got some tokens now. And they got the devil's playback. Oh boy. Oh boy, but we've got the simulacrum, so what could go wrong? Nothing. Nothing can possibly go wrong. I love their token deck, though. Feels like it should be a Kaikar deck, but I don't know. The Wrath. Okay. The Land. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. <laughs> hey, this is the same number my opponent scooped on last time. Are they going to let it happen? Are you ready for a hand? Uh, all this, please. All this. Eh? What do you think? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this is what alchemy was really made for. All right, put one of them onto the battlefield. It's going to be the summons. Where's the summons? There's the summons. Okay. Submit one. Alright. Land check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three. Three is not four. I'm really hoping to... I was hoping to cast Seagate Restoration, no max hand size, then sweep. I could die if I do that. Live dangerously. Live dangerously no max hand size magma opus is there <laughs> there are many options for castable cards and i think the right play is to pass <laughs> and see if i lose this game it would be really funny if I lost the game here because I left up the idol this time. <sighs> All right, do I have a swords or just something I can cast at instant speed without blue mana? I have March. March can phase out everything, but then I don't have any mana available for the incoming burn spell. Oh no. Is it really going to happen like this? Oh, I can cast this a braid. Okay. Okay. That's something. That'll make a creature. The colorless mana is still useless, though. If I had one more blue, this should be easy mode. So, Resolvies. Cool. Now what? Can't cast the counter spell. The commit? X equals seven with two mana open. So we have to sacrifice to the make disappear that has sat here for so long. Uh, yeah, I'll sacrifice my seven seven. That 
that casualty on the make disappear. Who knew in my nearly creatureless deck that it would come up big and the opponent doesn't want to play anymore. And that makes sense. Oh my goodness, what a battle. And we are back for the post game wrap and we're gonna check the stats powered by MTGA Assistant. And we went five and one with Hinata Dawn Crown. Despite being on the draw 80% of the time, uh, we did pull off easy. 5-1, and I, it's a good deck. Hinata's very strong, especially if you build it without a lot of the cards that I would say are closer to gimmicky cards for the deck. You don't need like a Baral's expertise. You don't need Feather. You don't need a bunch of like kind of sneaky cheeky ways to reduce cost. Inscription of Insight is another one that I just don't think you need. Just play the good Jeskai cards, the good Jeskai control cards. And then you throw in your Snowborn Simulacra and your Magma Opus as kind of your two and your Sublime Epiphany, I think, counts as well. That's like your three knockout punches when you have your commander. And you play a control game, you set that up, you make the play, and it's over. They're buried. It's done. It's an avalanche of value. It's very exciting. It's very fun. I don't regret it for a second. And I think that you should try it as well. Big shout out to How to Typo. Thanks again for your support on Patreon. You are very cool. But to all of you who stayed till the end and probably really enjoyed the Historic Brawl content, remember to leave a comment. The more comments and the more watch time you get, the more algorithm juice it gets, the more likely Historic Brawl content is to continue happening here and there on the channel. I enjoy it, but it is about making as many people as happy as I can make them and algorithm stuff actually goes a long way. So remember to like and subscribe as well. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. You're cool.